how much inventory we have is really important for every supply chain. This is often called how much inventory on hand or inventory in stock we have. Carefully tracking how much inventory we have is obviously super important for operational effectiveness. If we run out, we have stock outs, missed sales, missed deliveries, unhappy customers, stopped production lines, etc. We also know that how much inventory we have is super important to the overall business performance, as it's a major type of capital employed, money tied up in the business, and because holding inventory is a major cost. Inventory costs us in many ways, and I'm not even talking about the price we pay to buy it, but the direct costs that we have to pay out, such as ordering costs, holding costs, and the indirect costs, financial financing costs, opportunity costs, operational costs, complexity, additional managerial control, longer lead times, etc. I explain lots more about these types of inventory costs in detail in my inventory management course, but for now, just remember that having inventory incurs lots of costs. So, just another reason that tracking how much inventory you have is crucial. We can measure how much in total by type, like raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, spare parts, etc., by location, and by part type. Measuring how much inventory is done two main ways. Measuring the quantity of items and measuring the value of those items. So if you are a clothes shop, you could measure how many of each type of item you have, how many blue t-shirt, size large, by brand, la la, plus the number of t-shirts that are red, size medium, da 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 da, for all those items. Or, or probably actually and, you could measure the total value of all the items you have in inventory in terms of money. We want to be tracking it regularly over time, taking regular snapshots of our inventory status so that we can plot it over time. This can be done by physical stock counts or have the software report it every day, week, month, as probably the software gets information of stock arriving and leaving. Yeah, if only that was always right. Probably there will be a bit of both. Yes, the software claims it knows how much inventory we have, but there will also be periodic physical stock counts too. Anyway, inventory levels are always changing, maybe by the minute, by the second, and we want to know our average inventory each month. There are several ways to do this, and we'll explain two of them. If you wanted to calculate your average inventory for, say, the month of January, we could take the inventory count at the start and the end of January, add them together and divide by two. This is a simple and common method, but it could give you a very misleading answer due to its simplicity. This is a fast, simple and often adequate method, but to explain its weakness, imagine this situation. At the start of January, we do a stock count and see that we have 1,000 items in stock. And then, the next day, we sell all of them. We don't receive any more stock. So then we had zero stock, basically, all month. And then, of course, we do our stock count at the end of the month, and we still have zero. If we then did this simplistic calculation method for the average inventory, we would do 1,000, the start, plus zero, the end, that equals 1,000, and divide that by two to get 500. That's saying our average inventory for the month was 500. Now, I created the most extreme example, so this method looks really silly, but it does highlight why it's so simplistic. If you have much smoother inventory changes over time, and in fact we had started with 1,000 and sold 33 every day for the month, so by the end of the month we had basically got down to zero inventory again, well, then we would have had the same calculation and the answer of 500 average inventory for the month, and that would be right on. But that's also a very contrived situation. Anyway, 
This first method, averaging the start and the end inventory to get the average inventory over a time period, is a common but very simplistic method that could badly misrepresent reality.